Hey everybody, how's it going? Today, let's take a detailed look at the all-new 2014 Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. And this is going to be a detailed, in-depth review of the Cherokee. We'll start it up, show the engine, and get an exhaust clip and go over the performance data, as well as show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior, as well as exterior. Now there's a whole lot to talk about with the all-new Cherokee. Therefore, I'll be using two Trailhawk models to highlight key features and powertrain differences in addition to covering the model lineup as well as the four-wheel drive options. The Anvil Cherokee contains the new 3.2-liter Pentastar V6, while the Cherry Red features the standard 2.4-liter Tiger Shark 4-cylinder. And before we begin, I'd like to extend a big shout-out and special thanks to two organizations, North Point Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, as well as Lake Norman Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram located in Cornelius, North Carolina for allowing me to come out and providing the Cherokees featured in today's video. And so, without further ado, let's go and start her up, let her run. Remote start is also available. A smart key access system is also available as part of an additional technology group. You just keep the key fob in your pocket and you're able to wirelessly lock and unlock the vehicle via the touch sensors and push buttons on the door handles. Located on the passenger and driver's side doors, there's a black button to lock, just press it once, the horn will chime, then after waiting a second, just grab the handle, there's a touch sensor behind it, and it automatically unlocks the vehicle. The unique exterior color is known as Anvil featuring a full Morocco black leather interior with signature red color accent stitching for the Trailhawk models. Fantastic. And along with that smart key system, there's also remote and push button ignition by the button mounted in the dash. To start, all you have to do is just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to go. Fantastic. The new Cherokee features electric assist, speed proportional, rag and pinion power steering, and a nice and thick leather wrapped steering wheel with three spoke design and twin spoke design towards the bottom. 
Unique throwback logos since 1941 also located towards the bottom, a key theme in all the newest generation Jeeps. And not to mention satin silver accenting across the spokes and your multifunction controls. As far as the gearbox, an all new 9 speed ZF automatic transmission is the sole option available. The transaxle features a wide 9.8 to 1 ratio spread for peppy off the line acceleration without sacrificing highway fuel mileage. It also makes gear changes nearly seamless and actually increases fuel economy by 10% compared to a 6 speed auto. Interestingly enough, the 9-speed automatic does not employ manual shifting per se, but has an interesting new feature known as electronic range select. It means you can't manually select gears if you are shifting it yourself. Instead, you tell the transmission the range of gears you wanted to shift in between, which it will then choose the best gear based on performance, load, and economy. So how it works, for example while towing or traveling on steep grades, you would move the gear lever to the quote unquote manual mode and select a particular gear. This tells the transmission not to go above the gear that you selected. If you select 4th, it will only use gears 1 through 4 without you having to do it yourself. While in the vehicle sport mode, the 4 wheel drive system also maintains a 40 to 60 torque split between the front and the rear wheels. Once you put the vehicle in reverse, your backup camera automatically appears with guidance lines that automatically adjust as you turn the wheel. Padded gear selector with satin silver accent and a chrome band down below, as well as a stitched shift boot with unique Trailhawk red color accent stitching. Now I'll go into great depth about the different four wheel drive systems in just a little bit, but any Cherokee that comes with some form of four wheel drive has this select terrain controller to the left hand side of the gear lever. It contains your four main traction functions as well as your four wheel drive low, a part of an additional four wheel drive package, and the optional locking rear differential with rock mode on Trailhawk models. The new Cherokee's off-road ability and ease of use is further enhanced by a new feature known as Select Speed Control. Select Speed, in other words, is like cruise control for off-roading. It works regardless of terrain, rocks, and grades and is activated via the Select Terrain Controller to the left-hand side of the gear lever. When activated, it begins moving the vehicle at a subtle speed of just 0.6 miles an hour. The driver can then increase the speed by 0.6 miles an hour by moving through the nine forward gears to a top speed of approximately 5.5 miles an hour. In addition to select speed, there is also a hill descent control system which has a similar concept but executed in a different way. Hill descent uses vehicle stability control by modifying torque and brake pressure to keep constant speed down steeper grades. HDC also has only 5 speeds versus 9 for select speed. So we're going to flip on the headlamps, fog lamps, as well as the hazards. Both of the front windows are fully automatic. And we're going to check out the exterior, shall we? Now, the Jeep Cherokee is one of the most recognizable nameplates in the midsize SUV realm. Its capability, innovation, and durability over the years made it one of the most popular vehicles in the segment. Therefore, when Chrysler Group announced the reintroduction of an all-new Cherokee for 2014 after a 12-year hiatus, you would expect there not only to be a lot of hype over the release, but anticipation of its capabilities as a legitimate successor to the iconic XJ series Cherokee produced from 1984 to 2001. The Liberty, which replaced the XJ Cherokee, could never truly substitute that icon people had grown to love and respect over the years. Now, with the partnership of Chrysler Group and Fiat, an all new Cherokee is here. While a big styling departure from the original, it's packed with enough subtle styling cues and off road ability to brand it worthy of the Cherokee name and trail rated demeanor. The all new Cherokee is available in four model configurations Base Sport, Latitude, Limited, and the more off road oriented Trailhawk. With these models are two engine choices, including a new 2.4 liter Tiger Shark 4 cylinder or a new 3.2 liter Pentastar V6, in addition to three four wheel drive tiers based on trim levels. The models, aside from Trailhawk, come standard with front wheel drive, while the Trailhawk comes standard with all four wheel drive tiers, including a Trailhawk exclusive feature known as Active Drive Lock which essentially adds a locking rear differential to the mix. The two main four-wheel drive tiers include Jeep's Active Drive 1 and Active Drive 2. Trailhawks feature both 1 and 2 in addition to drive lock. We'll delve more into the mechanics of the four-wheel drive systems in just a little bit. As far as construction, the new Cherokee takes more international inspiration over the original XJ. The new Cherokee is also more of crossover in nature than SUV with unibody construction, along with a chassis that forms the basis of the Dodge Dart, which also has roots with Alfa Romeo. 
The global utilization of design and construction elements not only help in volume but saves time and money. The chassis itself consists of 65% high strength steel with a 36% increase in torsional rigidity compared to the Liberty and measures 14,800 foot-pounds per degree of twist. Dimensionally, the Cherokee is slightly larger than the Liberty with a 0.2 inch increase in wheelbase or just under an inch for Trailhawks, up from the Liberty's 106.1 inch wheelbase. Length increases by just over 5 inches while width grows about an inch or 2.5 inches for Trailhawks. So far, I've talked a lot about the Trailhawk model, but what is it really? Simply put, it's the only trail-rated version of the Cherokee. It's built to go places that the everyday Cherokee couldn't. Most of today's crossover market is dominated by buyers who don't want that characteristic brawny SUV-like driving profile. So in general, the Cherokee offers a great blend of packages from mild-mannered to all-out. The Trailhawk is the all-out model for those looking to do more than just city driving, those who are more apt to off-roading their Cherokee. In comparing off-road ability, non-Trailhawk models only have four modes within Jeep's Select Terrain Traction Control System – Auto, Snow, Sport, and Sand Slash Mud. But with the Trailhawk and its locking rear differential, there's also a rock setting for serious off-road ability. Not only that, but Jeep's rugged DNA is unleashed with Meteor 245-65 R17 tires, which raise the vehicle up an additional inch. All in all, that's two inches higher than a standard front-wheel drive Cherokee. It also gets exclusive front and rear fascias that increase approach, breakover, and departure angles over other trim levels. All of the chrome trims are replaced by gunmetal gray accents, in addition to a unique hood graphic. The red accented tow hooks, front and rear, allow the vehicle to pull upwards of 8,250 pounds or be towed out of a precarious scenario. Other hardware include more robust wheel flares, underbody skid plates, more efficient end cooling, as well as an extra transmission oil cooler. As far as specs, the new Trailhawk features a 28.5 degree approach angle, 22.8 degree breakover angle, and 32.2 degree departure angle, all improving over the Liberty. It also gains 0.8 inches of ground clearance, which is now 8.6 inches. All four-wheel drive systems feature an automatic rear axle disconnect, which reduces performance loss when four-wheel drive isn't needed. Therefore, the drivetrain will not rotate while in two-wheel drive. This decreases drivetrain effort and boosts fuel mileage. If the vehicle were to be towed, such as behind an RV, the drive shaft automatically disengages when the vehicle is placed in neutral, making towing a cinch. Active Drive 1 utilizes a single speed power transfer unit to send power to the rear differential to help improve both under and oversteer while increasing yaw control and balancing torque via the brakes. Active Drive 2 is also available for non Trailhawk models. It adds a second two-speed power transfer unit with low range ability that gives it a crawling profile similar to what you would find in a Wrangler. Selecting low range locks the front and rear drive shafts to allow for a 2.91 to 1 low range gear reduction for both axles, which gives maximum torque and towing ability when needed, which also raises the vehicle up about an inch included in the two inch lift for the Trailhawk. The Cherokee's crawl ratio is also very dependent on the engine. For the four-cylinder, it's 56 to 1, while the V6 features a 47.8 to 1 ratio. The new Cherokee can also pull a good amount of weight for its class. While limited to just 2,000 pounds in standard models, if equipped with the towing package, you can pull upwards of 4,500 pounds with V6. Of course, all of the latest safety tech is available if desired, including parallel and perpendicular parking assist, in addition to adaptive cruise control that also works in stop-and-go traffic. In other words, it stops and starts itself based on the car in front. Not to mention forward collision warning, lane departure, blind spot monitoring, and rear cross path detection. As I touched on earlier, the Trailhawk rides on a unique set of 17 by 7.5 inch polished aluminum alloy wheels with satin black inserts, all wrapped in beefy 245-65 Firestone tires at each corner. As far as the brakes, there's a few different options. Standard equipment consists of 13 by 1.1 inch vented brakes in front, while solid rear discs measure 11 inches with single piston calipers on each corner. Optional are two piston calipers up front and larger 12.6 by half inch discs in the rear. As far as the Cherokee's fully independent suspension, it features McPherson struts in front and a four link rear suspension with aluminum components front and rear for less weight and more strength. Up front, aluminum makes up a one-piece subframe and A-arms, while high-strength steel cradle supports the rear with aluminum lateral links. Twin tube dampers front and rear along with stabilizer bars.
Trailhawk dimensions include a length of 182 inches with a width of 74.9 inches and a height of 67.8 inches. Total curb weight depending on how equipped is around 3750 to 4100 pounds. So let's go and pop the hood. As far as performance, the Cherokee can be had with two different engines. The standard engine in all models is a 2.4 liter single overhead cam 16 valve all aluminum 4 cylinder that produces 184 horsepower at 6400 rpm and 171 pound feet of torque at 4600 rpm. If you want to have that extra dose of performance and towing capability though, you're going to want to go with the new 3.2 liter all aluminum dual overhead cam 24 valve Pentastar V6. It's pretty much of similar design as the 3.6 liter found in other Chrysler Group vehicles but with a smaller bore. It produces 272 horsepower at 6500 rpm and 239 pound feet of torque at 4400 rpm. 0 to 60 times are an estimated 6.4 seconds for the V6 and 8.9 seconds for the 4 cylinder. Fuel economy though is where the 4 cylinder really shines. This vehicle has a 15.9 gallon fuel tank and can run on regular fuel for both engines. With the 4 cylinder and front wheel drive expect a range of 22 city and 31 miles to a gallon on the highway while V6 models achieve 19 city and 28 on the highway. 4 wheel drive lowers it ever so slightly for both engines but with these numbers it makes the new Cherokee the most fuel efficient Jeep to date. As far as the interior, the new Cherokee is anything but cheap. Build quality is excellent for the class when combining premium feeling materials and touch points. Standard vehicles feature soft cloth while optional leather is available like we have here. Panel fitment is quite tight making the interior feel very solid. As you come across the door, the majority of the top portion is soft touch, with padded material coming across the armrest with color accent stitching, faux wood, and all of your electric switches including your power windows, power locks, and power mirrors. Lower storage down below, and also houses your fuel cap release. As far as the seats, these optional sport leather buckets feature contrasting patterns coming across the middle as well as the bolsters, as well as color accent stitching in this Trailhawk model. All of your electric adjustments are located down below, including your 4-way power lumbar adjustment. All in all, the seats are comfortable and supportive, with a good amount of lateral support down below and up top. Attention to detail is also quite good, especially with the Trailhawk logo stitched into the back of each seat. The headrests are adjustable, as are the seat belts. Not to mention a plethora of airbags up top and down below. Really the best comparison that I can think of as far as the build quality goes is the Grand Cherokee. Everything that you would find in that as far as the panel fitment, tightness, as well as the overall feeling and quality of materials is exactly what you would find in the Cherokee. Of course you're not going to have things like the leather wrap dash and the Alcantara headliner, but for the price point in this particular vehicle class it is really quite good. The dash is wrapped in padded material with color accent stitching as it wraps across the dash. Also optional is a full panoramic glass roof. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. And there is a rev limiter in park and neutral around 4000 RPM. And now for the four cylinder.
So let's go and shut her up. Nice solid doors. Now the multimedia and digital displays in the Cherokee can be configured a few different ways. Standard Cherokee models come with a 5 inch LCD touchscreen interface mounted in the dash, as well as a 3.5 inch color display located in between the speedometer cluster. This one as you can see has some upgraded hardware, a 7 inch thin film transistor display like I touched on earlier as well as an upgraded 8.4 inch Uconnect system. The Uconnect system is Chrysler Group's mobile media navigation telemetrics interface and is probably one of the easiest and most comprehensive systems to use on the market. There's also two different optional sound systems, a basic stereo from the factory or an upgraded 506 watt premium Alpine surround sound system. Not to mention standard satellite radio as well as hands-free Bluetooth connectivity. Side curtain airbags, grip handles for all four passengers, cloth line visors with vanity mirrors, and your garage home link located down below there. As far as the middle stack, you have an auto dimming rear view mirror, controls for your interior illumination as well as rigging lamps, and a padded sunglass container. Nicely accented and a little bit of chrome bright work. Now as far as the Uconnect system, like I mentioned earlier, it's really quite simple to use, and in all the cars I've filmed over the past, this is probably my favorite system as far as its ease of use and functionality and getting used to it. Basically, all of your different commands for the system are located down below. This particular one does not have a navigation, but it is available, so I will cut away in a little bit and show you how it works. Otherwise, it will show as a little icon down below there. Right now, we're in our main media screen where we have our different media options off to the left here, including iPod, auxiliary, hands-free Bluetooth streaming of audio, USB input, as well as SD card input. It also displays the song, artist information, as well as album artwork if it's available. Shuffle up top if you have your MP3 player connected, scrolling between the different options, hitting pause, browsing the available tracks, playlists, songs, albums, your audio adjustments to the far right, balance fade, equalizer, as well as speed compensated volume. If you hit info, it'll also bring up more detailed song information, as well as the available tracks off to the right, so there's a couple different ways to utilize it. If you had the navigation option, there would be a nav button up top here so you can dual yield your radio, multimedia, and or navigation. Go on over to radio. Right now we're on our Sirius XM satellite radio, and your other functionality including your AM and FM are located off to the left there. You can also browse the available stations for both AM and FM, your presets, favorite songs, sports, as well as traffic and weather. And with the built-in hard drive as well, it also records songs so you can double back and listen to them again. If you hit replay, you can see right here where you can rewind, fast forward, and go back to live radio. Definitely pretty neat. Also, go in between the different stations, manual tuning, your traffic and weather like, a, like you saw earlier, as well as your audio adjustments. Now the favorite icon off to the far right allows you to tag artists and songs, so if you're listening to the radio, depending on, it doesn't matter which station it's on, if it automatically comes on the air, it'll let you know so you can click on it and go directly to that station. Your preset stations are also located up top there for ease of use. Also something else that's pretty neat, you can also scroll using this little drag up here to go to certain times of the song. If you go down to controls, it controls your heated seats, as well as your heated steering wheel, and your auto dimming rear view mirror. There's also SOS emergency roadside assistance, activated via a button at the bottom of the mirror. System settings allow you to basically customize every single aspect of the vehicle. 
You can set your heated seats and steering wheel to automatically come on on a cold day. Definitely pretty nifty. All of your climate control can also be controlled from this screen. This particular one features a dual zone electronic automatic climate control with basic controls down below, and I'll show that in just a second. With your temperature adjustments on either side, different zones, back to your controls again, fan speed in the middle, syncing both sides, front and rear defrost and one touch automatic. Down below, you also have the same functionality, including your temperature on either side, fan speed, front and rear defrost, AC and recycling. There's also a back button, your traction control, as well as turning the screen off if you didn't want it on, especially at night. As far as your hands-free Bluetooth telephone, it'll automatically ask you to pair it, where you can then store contacts, messages, as well as favorite quick dials up top, and voice dial through the voice recognition system. The Uconnect apps? The newest Uconnect systems also have the ability to act as a Wi-Fi hotspot. You can load up custom apps, as well as Sirius Travel Link. I'll highlight Travel Link a little bit more in just a second with the navigation portion. But in a nutshell, those are all the basic features of the Uconnect system available in the new Jeep Cherokee. The beautiful padded material across the dash, also accented in the red color accent stitching for the Trailhawk, and there's a bit of storage up top with the Jeep logo. As we come down the flowing center console, you have a little bit of storage up front with easy access to your different media ports, including your SD, USB, iPod, auxiliary integration, as well as a 12 volt power outlet. And to the left, like we touched on earlier, is the drive controller for the different four wheel drive modes and locking differentials. Continuing on back, you have an electronic park and brake. Pull up to activate, put your foot on the brake, push down to deactivate, two illuminated cup holders, padded armrests, also with the color accent stitching, and a nice size storage well with an extra USB outlet as well as a power outlet. It's also two tier, so you have a small storage tray up top. Now as far as the steering wheel, as in typical Chrysler Group fashion, your radio controls are located on the back. The right hand side controls the different radio modes as well as the rope volume. The one on the left controls your um, different presets as well as scrolling through the available stations. Cruise control located here. Your driver info system located on this side and this little controller setup. Your hands-free telephone and voice commands are located below that. Help. To play music, include the type, which can be song, artist, album, genre, playlist, audiobook, or podcast. Say things like, play song, Maple Leaf Rag, play artist, Scott Chaplin, or play track five. You can interrupt this help message by pressing the voice button. For radio, cancel. Cancelled. So it's a pretty simple system to use, a nice pleasant voice to listen to, it just takes a little bit to get used to. As far as the driver information system utilizing the little directional arrows, you go through different menus. Here's a digitalized speedometer, vehicle information, other system diagnostics, fuel economy, trip information, radio, stored messages, navigation if available, customizing the screen to display certain things in certain places, and back to your speedometer. Your vehicle temperature as well as fuel is located down below, and your tachometer and speedometer off to the right. And all of your lighting controls located to the left, including your interior illumination, power rear hatch, and a little storage tray located down below here. All in all, a nice simple vehicle with a well put together interior and high customizability. Definitely a lot more comfortable with plenty of extra creature comforts than the previous Jeep Cherokee offered back in the day. So let's go and check out the back seat. Now I'll talk about this a little bit more in just a second, but backseat space for the Cherokee is really improved compared to the last offering, with a much greater level of room as well as comfort. 
The door panels also feature the nice soft padded trim with the color accent stitching for Trailhawk models. The rear bench seat, 60-40 split, so you can fold it down for a little bit more rear cargo space. And they're a lot more defined and bolstered than the previous offering. Not to mention storage pockets on the back of the seats. In order to fold the seats down, there's a strap on either side, just pull it, and they basically do all the work for you and lock in place. Now another nice welcomed improvement for the all new Cherokee compared to the last offering is a much improved rear seat when it comes to comfort as well as interior space. Now I'm about 5'11 and with a comfortable seating position for someone of my height up front I'll probably have a good 4 inches maybe 4.5 and, and leg space probably about the same. The seats also have a nice cutout right here giving you a little bit more wiggle room. There's also not a lot of hardware under the seats, so you can stick your legs up under a little bit further if you need to kind of kick back and stretch a little bit. There's an AC power outlet down below there, padded armrest with two cup holders, as well as grip handles up top. In general, the seats actually sit pretty nice too. They have a little bit of bolstering across the back, not a whole lot, a little bit more down below here, and the entry threshold is nice and soft too, so it makes it nice getting in. There's a good amount of lower back support too, so I think I can definitely sit back here for a longer period of time for a longer trip or so. The headrests are also adjustable for you taller individuals. Overall, not bad. And it's also a good height of seating position too, so you can see across the cabin, see at the windshield, look around. So it's definitely not claustrophobic back here at all, which is some of the previous generation Cherokees, you definitely feel a little bit of claustrophobia with that big old bench seat in the back. <laughs> So, let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle. Now, a power liftgate is also available, part of that technology group that I was talking about earlier, that also included the remote start, smart key access, and rear backup camera. Now, as far as cargo space, behind the second row seats, it's around 24.6 cubic feet. There are some small storage pockets located on either side, with cargo anchors, illumination, and a power outlet. Down beneath the floor is your spare tire. But if you need a little bit more privacy in the back, there's a cargo cover that you could pull to completely cover the back of the vehicle when you look in. And not to mention, like I showed you earlier, if you need more cargo space up to the front seats, just fold the seats down and it expands the cargo to around 54.9 cubic feet. The passenger seat is fully manual, with manual height adjustment. Something else that's pretty neat is that just like the Dart, there's a hideaway storage compartment underneath the passenger seat. It just flips up with ease. The glove box is also locking, has a deep well that extends far back, and it's also illuminated. 
While the all-new Jeep Cherokee may be different in the eyes of the Jeep purist, it can be equipped to not only be a sleek urban runabout, but a spirited off-road performer. With great model flexibility, including the trail-rated Trailhawk, it can fill a wide variety of tastes and needs. Combine that with performance variety, economy, and luxury features, and you not only have one of the most versatile Cherokee offerings, but definitely the most refined. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the all-new 2014 Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.